This is Tita on Plus TV Africa. Happy Workers' Day to every hardworking person out there. I, I know it's it's a public holiday, right? It doesn't feel that way, but yeah. My name is Elsie Godwin, and of course, this is Tea Time, and um, we are here to give you the best anal analysis when it comes to entertainment stories. And I have my co-anchors with me to do this. They are Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshanke. It's good. Hello. It's good. Happy mm. Workers' Day. I deserve the Happy Workers' Day. Yeah. I feel like I'm working a lot harder than this I was. This is where she grabbed the one you yeah. said. Like, I did, like, like, you said it specifically. Like, I'm working harder than I usually do even before coronavirus. Yeah. Like, I, I thought mean, I was the only one who felt yeah, that way. Like, nah, it's hard. For those who have to work this period, I think the, the, the work doubled. Mm. And it's, mm -hmm. So big shout out to all to the essential anyway. workers. Yeah. And yeah. According to what some people would say. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so yeah. So big shout out to all the essential workers and all the health workers out there. Y'all are the true MVPs. Thank yeah. you Happy for being of essential Happy service. Workers Happy Workers Day Thank to you. Thank you. And secondly, today mm -hmm. is... Huh. Oh, shabby, yo. Go see Laie. Happy birthday, mom. I love mm. you. Happy birthday. Long life and, and prosperity And thankfully, he did not forget. Yes, because no. you love cause problems. Really wish your dad happy birthday. <laughs> I know, we right? have to make sure we wish your mom happy birthday. Thank you, mom. Happy birthday, mommy. Thank God you for all you. you do. For everything. Mm. Yes. For and yes, with him. to yeah, Benny we as to well. to that, right? Thank you for giving us um, this it's trouble, trouble. Yes. of person. Yes. <laughs> In the name of your fellow Lewis, okay. God bless you. I hope I'm no longer trouble to you, though. Mm. And happy birthday to Benny Hemme. Yeah, yeah. Benny you know, Hemme. Happy birthday when to When we say too. thank you to the whole production team, she's is one of the vital parts of that production, of production. especially on this team. Key. Yeah, <laughs> key, very key. There's no <laughs> tea without Benny. Benny. Yeah, so shout out happy to Benny Hemme. Birthday, happy, Benny. happy birthday, darling. Okay, let's get right into the conversation. Nollywood actor and MC Bola Hon Olatunde, widely known as Bolly Lomo, has reacted to rape allegations le leveled against him. He says he has informed his lawyers. He was recently called out on Twitter for allegedly raping several women, and according to the accuser, Bolly Lomo had molested and raped several underage girls at different points. In a statement released via his Twitter page on Thursday, the actor said this is not the first time he has been accused falsely of rape. His statement read in part, quote, considering the severity of these allegations, I deem it pertinent to state that I, Bulaho Olatunde, aka Bolly Lomo, categorically denied these allegations and state that I have never raped any person. I have always respected women and rape or assault is not something I will condone or participate in. And as such, I will not tolerate any attempts to smear my name with such allegations. End of quote. Mm. Okay. I like that he's responding though. I mean, mm. the first time it happened, or he, the first time was there was an accusation, he was silent. And I, I kind of like the tone of his... Um, should I call it press release now or press statement or response? Mm. Um, and I really do hope that his lawyers can trace the accuser if they don't already know each other and start the conversation at least. Let them understand what exactly is going on. Because there was a tweet of um, Omojo I saw yesterday and he was, I can't say it word for word, but he was basically talking about how um, if once there is a false accusation, um, in regards to rape and it comes to light, it's usually, um, it's, it's not just, not, not even, I'm not talking about the um, person who was accused, I'm talking about oh. the whole general movement of trying to make sure that things like this don't happen and those who do it are brought to book. It just ruins the chances of the real victims to get um, the justice that mm. they deserve. So I hope that he can follow this through if he's innocent, innocent let the, um, what, I don't know what measure they're going to use right now, but I would like some clarity in this conversation. My worry with, <clears throat> I mean, I've, it feels like I'm repeating myself over and over because um, nothing has changed and I think it will, but the issue with rape and accusations is that it's so limiting and I wish we could rewind life and we had like a massive CCTV camera viewing everyone, but um, the problem with accusations, and which is why I have personally just decided that I will believe the victim first until proven otherwise, mm. is that um, even if um, even if he was in, a, in guilty, he would be protected. But then you don't have protection for someone who um, for the victims rather. So if Bolo, Boli Lomo comes out and says that he didn't do it, let's just say he did, quote unquote, he did, and he says he didn't do it, they, and the lady can't prove that he that she was raped, proved in the sense of like the limited law system that we have, then he goes scot-free. Mm. 
and that for me is a big worry which is why i don't really stress too much on like false accusations and things like that it should be for it, they should be persecuted for that and everything but i just find that like a bit unbalanced because then the ones who are who are guilty and we can't prove don't get mm. anything either so for me i will always choose to believe the rape the victim especially when there's a series of people like a lot of the times um false accusations don't have a domino effect so if i'm bitter about my boyfriend who just didn't give me sex when i wanted and i said that oh he is lying there's always like a almost like a reject against that because they're like are you sure about that like this guy is this and this and that and there's a lot more rhythm to support an innocent man but when i start to see things like one person two three four and all the stories have an underlining statement in it they are all narcissistic they all feel like they can the stories are aligned and these women don't know each other it becomes harder and harder for me not to believe i'm not to believe that this person is a rapist but then again we're talking about the law system here and i have no dealings with that but i'm glad that he <clears throat> he did respond um and that um he follows through so a lot of the times these people come out and show their muscles because at the end of the day for me if as as that man who me thinking about Bolly Lomo is that he's doing this to fight for his life even if he did rape this person he needs to be able to make this statement if he still wants to have a future in the media industry because then all the other like things would be falling apart so i'm just saying now this is like um hypothetically speaking but i i like that he's doing that but i hope that he continues that rhythm in telling us how it goes and what happens in there because it will be I, I would like to know that. If not, I doesn't really mean much for me. I can only hope and pray that he's actually innocent because um, a lot of men tend to think that rape is when you tear the, you rip off the clothes and all of that. No, that it's that's not it. It's when she's told you no multiple times and you still go ahead, whether you use your influence or you sweet talk her and then you finally have your way, but you know that from the onset there was no consent, then that is still raping a woman so if he's thinking oh but it was mutual mm. because i spoke i sweet talked that into doing it bro you still rape that mm. so you need to be clear on your facts because it will be sad if this actually gets to the um investigatory level and mm. then we now discover that okay there's still some form of rape especially now that people have a clever understanding of what rape is so um like you rightly said i would just like him to follow through and make sure he gets his facts right and if not look for a way to sort it out maybe set a lot of courts or whatever mm. it is and just try to not blow up blow it out of proportion yeah. something that you can actually and, and, and right i guess now. while we're still talking about this is really good for men especially in this side of the world to start to educate themselves on the terminologies um we are in a in a culture that doesn't really promote respect for women and i think because we uh, we have allowed it in society we don't we think that we're also allowed by the law states people think to understand what statutory rape is and knowing that you have an influence to caress people into forcefully giving their bodies up to you so it doesn't always have to look like the nollywood movies where you know they've te they've te <laughs> and there's like black eye and all that type of stuff so really start to like to have that type of conversation with your friends like if you if you if you're thinking about watching now you're thinking like mm, maybe i just witness something like that or maybe my friend or someone who said something to me like start to have that conversation with people let it not just die with bolilomo or yeah Brian and Moore, i also hope people. the ca accuser of um bolilomo now will not get cowed into now saying oh this is getting too much i can't face it anymore. well yeah you have the right to pull back if you can't follow through anymore but i just hope that she continues and give us um should i call it receipts now or facts and things that will actually that make people understand the kind of rape like you said it's probably not oh tearing off this and that but for her to be able to tell her own story for people mm. to understand and also learn from that story to know that okay this rape is not until you put me to a corner and put me down and do stuff like that i just hope that there will be a problem I, I, I think I think more so if I'm going in really into the future, I wish as a lawyer on this table is that if, or whoever is listening as a lawyer, they need Are to start preparing. Are you shaking me? Is there no lawyer on this table? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not lawyer. Yes, um, is that people need to start like having a system that is built specifically for rape. It's super limiting because what you just said now is why I know that this case is not going to go anywhere. Mm. The system doesn't have the the capacity to really judge rightly because except i bring receipts and i said this yesterday like said i bring the come to you while they just finished raping me it's just all she has is a story that's it and if you choose to believe it then she has a chance if you don't then she doesn't and that's not sufficient enough so it's hard to be able to like prove that somebody statutory mm. raped you like it's hard 
um and i i, I don't know how they're gonna be able to do that but i would understand if the girl backs out because if i've said my story once i've said it twice i've said it 10 times and people want more from me and i can't give more like i'm just gonna go no, back she into wasn't the corner the one who came out the first time this is i'm just saying any girl time. any any girl okay all right, let's move on to the next story. So I don't even know what to make of the story, but a Twitter user tweeted, LOL, Ricardo actually has good songs, end of quotes. And that was how Ricardo Banks went off. Replying the tweet, he said, what is the LOL for? What is the actually for? Now my job, been doing it for six years now. If you don't expect me to have good songs, the joke is on you. Musically, no one knows more than Don Jazzy that introduced me to the game. So if you... Uh, okay, so F you and the useless surprise. Yeah. Mm. I F you and your for, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait for him being like super touchy. I, I think mean, he's, he's super being... touchy because this person did not even ask you or mention you. It was just a tweet. And that LOL, yes, how he has seen it is one way to read it. But it could also be an LOL to laughing at someone who thinks that Ricardo doesn't have a good song. Or maybe he was like, having oh, a conversation with wow, somebody. He actually has a good song. Oh, he actually has good songs. So I, I don't know what was up with him, but it's interesting to me. I mean, he's obviously, he's been dragged a lot this and season. And he's locked down in a country he doesn't want to be in. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. And, I mean, he's been dragged a lot of the times. And there's been, in that conversation, there was more people saying, you know, that he is not, like, he's, they didn't rate him, Shah. Um, well, right now they're still telling him, oh God, this energy you're using for an unknown person, can you go back to Banner Boy Street and quote it and use the same energy? I think he was just trying not to uh, um, start a fight with it. Or he with can a, start a fight with someone with. he feels And I don't think this is a fight. So I think he's just making a statement. No, to me, there's nothing that much with, wrong with it. If somebody, if, if I feel like somebody's undermining me, I think I have a right to, to, go, off. to go off on that. That's just human for me. For me, Sha. But um, I like how we brought Don Jazzy into it. I think Don Jazzy is somebody that um, he, I guess, his personality um, shines a lot that I think sometimes people forget to talk about his talent and his hard work and what he's done for mm. um, the industry, for, the industry, for stars. Like, this is one person that I will feel very comfortable if I had knew a loved one or somebody I cared about was in his hands. And I can't really say that for a lot of other people. Um, either they start to look too much like the person that signed them up. That's, that's for me with David Doe. I feel like everybody looks like a, like a second type of David Doe's cousin. But this person <laughs> really allows you to thrive and really be yourself in every sense the of liberty. it um and that's very t like it's crazy to me that he can even manage yeah, to which do is that why you can see a lot of different sounds coming out of movies. yeah mm -hmm. it's not like everybody's sounding same pantom, pantom, yeah, yeah. Mm. Ajahn Badi style. take the take i did this. not say Ajahn Badi style. <laughs> all right so i'm too mouthed on this particular story because um i feel like in a way, bro, why are you being so touchy? Like, why? Then, secondly, if, like, um, if I said already, if I feel like somebody's undermining, which Ricardo has been getting a lot yeah. of lately. Do you understand? And if you really want to look at it, Ricardo Banks has very good songs. He's done so much in the industry. He doesn't have a bad song, really. Yeah, but Ricardo Banks is one of the good artists we have in Nigeria. He's I just don't think maybe he's not just as frequent. I feel like he, he gives a lot of space in between. That's the only thing I can say, mm -hmm. that he takes a while to He's drop dropped songs. bangers back to back, and his um, most recent song, um, Options, is also oh, yeah, a banger. That's, that's a dope song. And um, yeah. if I feel like the whole Nigeria, after dropping all these bangers, and you guys still keep coming for me, comparing me to um, Bonner Boy, saying, oh, you shouldn't have done Wendy this, or Challenger. Bonner Boy coming for me, or, you get, it's okay to be touchy, so, but it's okay to be touchy, but how you, how you go about it is the problem. Now, should they have brought this out on Twitter? Should they have gone? That's his personal way of expressing his feelings, so I don't have a problem with how people choose to express their feelings. It's your feelings, bro. You understand? So that's why I said I'm two-mouthed on this one. Like, in a way, I felt like it was touchy, but in a way, I also feel like he has the right to be touchy. Mm. Okay, me, I felt he was touchy and touchy and touchy. There's no two mouths in this matter because the lady just tweeted something that can be interpreted in two different ways, basically. But anyway, it's all right. It's time for a quick break. But when we come back, we have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I they see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now. Wow. And that determines my next step.
Why you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Across TV Africa, we feeling good. No time to dull. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still by. Some say they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, <laughs> Kylie Jenner demands cancellation of Stormy Couture um, trademark over fraud claim. She has accused business moves chiefs of registering the name just a month after her daughter's birth in a bid to cash in on the name. She welcomed her first child, Stormy Webster, in February 2018 and she recently filed paperwork with officials at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to secure the rights to a number of brands related to her little girl's name, including Stormy Ward. However, he, um, she was slapped with a lawsuit from Business Moves consulting bosses who claimed her trademarks, if granted, would cause confusion with their own Stormy Couture label. Now Jenna is accusing them of registering Stormy Couture just a month um, after her daughter's birth in bid to cash in. According to TMZ, she is demanding authorities withdraw the trademark permits for um, the brand name, citing fraud. Um, at first, I was thinking maybe Kylie Jenner was being a little bit too extra, okay. but when I now realized that BMC, which is the um, business move um, consult consultancy, or what yeah, is it? Yeah, they 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 actually did the same with Assad, uh, which is DJ Khaled's son and DJ Khaled father, and the case is still ongoing. So it's like wow. it's part of their business move actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you what is a business actually? <laughs> yeah. So and the case is still ongoing. So I was like, okay, so maybe she has every right to actually, but. Before business moves even said she wanted to cancel anything Stummy mm -hmm. because Stummy in her own right too is a brand with a Stummy World party. But mm -hmm. how many has she done? She's two now, right? So I think she's just done one or I get even one still though is a lot because of how much publication yeah. that they give. But I, t I still think this smells to me like a very like I always, I always criticize celebrities Egoistic. a lot here, but this is another celebrity problem that I can't stand. First of all, you're not the only Stormy. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand that you're giving. What's the girl who called um, Donald Trump the the um, stripper? Says Stormy as well, right? Oh yes, yeah, actually. exactly. Mm. Um, <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Um, I understand that you have given a brand sense because you're a celebrity and all of that stuff, but the idea that nobody else can coin that name to use it for theirs is ridiculous to me. Um, and that's just personal opinion. But speaking on the law, my problem is that do you want them to revoke this name and give it to you? Because then that for me is a problem, even by legal standards. Just because this person has claimed it in, quote, in, your, in your words, bad faith, does not mean that you have the right to na to earn and own every trademark that has Stormy involved mm. in it. Like, that's crazy. So that's kind of like where I'm stuck in, in between that. When you were filing this thing, because I already saw the list of trademarks that she has. Like, it's crazy. Stormy party. Stormy, Stormy. Stormy, like, there's a lot of trademarks in regards mm. to Stormy. Stormy's, Stormy's, Stormy's name. And, and, and I have to agree when you mentioned the statement that it is business. Like, even if they made, they saw that, oh, wow, this person's name is getting attraction. I'm just going to grab Stormy. What's the word that they were even fighting for? Stormy Couture. Stormy Couture. If they're doing that, what's the problem with that? Like, that, that's something that Chris would do. If Chris saw that there was something like trend or whatever and she could trademark in and had the, the power and the money and the influence to do that, why why not? Mm. So it's crazy to you know I me, mean? but um, let's see what the law says. Like, you reiterated re this business as far as I'm concerned. This is why when you're bringing out a business solution or an idea, before you even start speaking to anyone, you're advised to even buy like your domain name, yeah. register it, patent it if you want mm -hmm. to go that far and all that. So I know know there are people who deliberately buy up domain names waiting mm -hmm. for you to come True. and get them True. and you pay that is a form of business except the whole world is going to wake up tomorrow and say that's now illegal if you're not um, readily um, going to use a particular name you cannot patent it or trademark mm. it or copyright it whatever it is then maybe there's a conversation but I would like to see I, I like that you cited the Assad, 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 Assad right? Yeah. I like that you started his case and it's still where that is ongoing till now mm -hmm. so it just, it just goes to show that even the judges are humans as well and they're mm. wondering okay 
okay so what do we do at this point i would like to see how this plays out but based on what the law is right now what people have been doing for a long time mm -hmm. i don't think she has a case here whether it's with bad intentions the bad intention is to make money but when they're making money become bad That's intentions it's a business so, like, yeah. i don't know and so also, um, while we're on this topic i may just like to trademark i have the fair name so anything she comes up with you fell in the future have mind. you trademarked it is this I, by I, I just said i just said it publicly that's not how you <laughs> I'm just choking, check obviously. It, check it again. <laughs> uh, I also wanted to mention because I remember we actually did this in, in, in like uni and stuff, and even the idea of patency and copywriting is quite um, what's the word? It has a back end to it, like it's an incomplete theology. Even in copywriting, it people mm. still have struggles, especially when it comes to like ownerships of ideas or inventions or things like that. I just wanted to put that out there that already they maybe that's why it's that long because it's hard, it's a very like wishy-washy type of system but i want to say this before we go to the next topic that i think in africa let me just concentrate on africa on nigeria here we need to start doing that a lot more i don't have i don't see companies mm. trademarking they having do. copy not they as do, do, not do. as much they especially they in the um they and do. The, the government they, comes they for just you don't now. have they don't just have the time to start pursuing anybody until they see yeah. that you're making huge money from no, it. No, I'm not even talking about trademarking yeah, their names. Yeah, they do. Because yeah, they do. All the, the, oh, all the creatives, personal yes, names. Yes, because all the creatives I know, like, that are huge, I have perfumes, and especially the arts, the art scenes, people who have, like, um, short film, there's a short film documentary thing, um, lady that I know. Like, there's so many people. Even when I there's talk about them, you know, they you know, name the pretend their names. It's Genevieve. Mm. So now you have Genevieve Magazine, you have Genevieve D, yeah. you have Genevieve Dad, but I think she has worked so hard um, with that name that if mm -hmm. she had actually trademarked mm -hmm. it or owned it, then it's yeah. It's going I feel like it's a lot of it. individuals so lot of that are not doing that. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, you should. Okay. I just did with a fresher public knowledge. I will go back to my lawyers. My lawyers will hear from me. Okay. Oh, okay. I used to think you were your only lawyer, but it's okay. Now no, moving on to the next story. Georgina Onoha is saying that the fact that she left acting to go into motherhood is mm -hmm. not a failure. Easy to call her a failure. Mm. I was going to ask that who said she was a failure, mm. so I a believe... Lot <laughs> yeah? A lot of people would have. Okay, that's why I said. Maybe it's off the back of what someone must have told her, because mm -hmm. I don't see her as a failure. I didn't even remember her until she, <laughs> until she came yeah. out to say this, and then she shared the um, the True part of video. a movie mm -hmm. that Funky Akindele was also in. I was like, I found that very interesting. Like, oh, okay. I have to agree that I felt the same way, too, that... Um, I don't think this is a very public thing. Like for me, when celebrities come out and say, "You guys said," I'm he I'm guessing that it's a high percentage of fans saying the same story. And I looked, and I didn't find anywhere that really insinuated mm -hmm. that maybe this is maybe one or two topics. Because I think in this part of the world, people actually value that decision that she made more than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of contradictory to me. But I can imagine that the people who love seeing her on sets are angry or sad, or that they miss her being on the big screen. It's something I've, I've always had a conversation with my friends about, especially being like a very loud feminist, is that my worry or the, the I guess the, the slippery slope of not being informed and empathetic when you're a feminist is that you can, you can push females to thinking that they've done something bad if they do decide to be um, domestic. domestic. I'm not, I don't have a bone of domestic in me, I know that, but, and that was one of the reasons why I liked feminism because it gave me the liberation to be able to do, be who I am. But because of that doesn't mean I shouldn't take out somebody else's comfort. So if you then want to still be like a housewife or who, whatever, I think you have a right to do that because there is so much value. Like I think those two things work together. We need women who can actually sit at home and, and raise good kids so that it can help the movement as well. So I feel like, anyway, my point is I'm, I'm, I don't see anything wrong with what she's done. And if she's happy, genuinely happy, then I don't have a problem with it. Okay, I wish I can give my take on this one, but we have to go. And that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And please do join the conversation with the hashtag Tea Time or Tea Time Plus TV Africa. You can also catch up on this conversation and all exclusive content by visiting our YouTube channel. And please do subscribe at Plus TV Africa. My thank you, as usual, will go to my co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Shunke, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe. <laughs>